Welcome to the XML and JSON data modeling best practices video from MarkLogic University. This video is part of a series of data modeling topics. You will learn some best practices when modeling data in XML and or JSON format. The target audience is developers, database administrators, and anyone involved in data modeling. A fundamental familiarity with MarkLogic is assumed. Additional details about these concepts can be found at www.marklogic.com resources and at docs.marklogic.com. The topics we will demonstrate include limiting the document size, getting granular, denormalizing, kiss or keep it simple. When in doubt, change it. First, Limit the document size. Think of a row, not a table of rows. An article rather than an encyclopedia or person and not a phone book. We have an example. We have a person, Bob, but also in this document, there is also Frank and Gwen, all in the same document. Large documents take longer to retrieve during queries. The ideal document size is around 100K with a plus or minus order of magnitude. So one kilobyte to about 10 megs. Also consider the effects on cache. Larger documents need larger expanded and compressed tree caches. They consume more memory even if the large documents are seldom queried. So ideally, we should be breaking up this into several person type documents. And in our second example, we can see I've done just that. I've now broken each document into its own separate person. And if you needed to actually group these together to maintain that type of quote unquote phone book grouping in this example, you could easily do that using collections. So we have a document of a nice size and we can add to this collection and get all the people in our phone book very easily just by querying our collection. Get granular. XML elements and JSON properties are the APIs to mark logic indexes. Put every useful piece of data into its own XML element or JSON property. In this example, we're inserting two JSON documents in the database, one for Bob and one for Frank. Notice that Bob's document states that he lives in Goa, India. Also, Frank lives in Chicago, but he lives at the Goa Apartments. Clicking around, we insert these documents into our database. Let's go to a query. Searching for people who live in Goa, we would also get Frank who lives in Goa Apartments. Now, Frank doesn't live in Goa, India. Frank lives in Chicago, USA. So therefore, it's a false positive. Term searches are more complicated due to the lack of granularity in the document model. Inserting documents with a more granular data model, we're now able to index on different parts of the address, including the city. So now we can search for all of those that live in Goa, India, easily and effectively by using indexes. And we come up with the correct answer of Bob. Documents are not relational tables. When data is normalized, there can be a loss of the meaning in the data. The relationships have been spread over many tables and must be reconstructed at query time. With a document data model, the relationships can be kept together with the data. Consider this JSON document representing an operation in a hospital. Normalization would spread the data for the hospitals, the operation types, the surgeons, and the prescribed drugs over many different tables. We need to reestablish those relationships by doing queries. In the document models, you can see the data is all kept with the document, capturing name value pairs and also hierarchical information such as one-to-many relationships, for example, the prescribed drugs. The persistent model can better represent the object data model 
that applications and middle might need is less need for extra load to change the data. If the operation required multiple surgeons, those relationships can be tracked in the same document without any normalization required. If the IDs or the primary keys need to be tracked, they can be added as additional JSON properties or attributes of XML elements. So one-to-many relationships can be modeled along with our regular key value pairs. What about the many-to-many -many relationships? For example, the surgeons, denormalizing all of those into every single transaction for our operations in our hospital might not be appropriate. Instead, you can add these IDs into your documents. And the transaction document can refer to these IDs, keeping the surgeon details separated. When transaction information and the surgeon information is needed, the documents can be searched accordingly. We've run a search on the surgeon ID and the operation type of transplant. We got back our document and we also get back our surgeon who would perform that operation. In this example, the document structure from our previous many-to-many -many example hasn't changed any. We still have our surgeons and our primary keys embedded in the document. What we have changed is how we're storing our surgeon facts. Instead of separate documents, we've chosen to store these in RDF triples. Triple indexes take a subject, which is the thing you're linking from, the predicate, which is semantic meaning about that link, and an object, which is the thing the subject is pointing to. In this example, we have six different facts about a surgeon, including the surgeon's title, the surgeon's first name, their surgeon ID, and also a pointer to a document where they did an operation, inserting these into our database. Sparkle queries, the query language for triples, can find the surgeon facts involved in this hospital operation. And of course, these facts can be combined with other mark logic queries to produce powerful search results beyond normal many-to-many -many joins. Keep it simple. Keep the XML and JSON structures simple. Don't attempt to create generic element objects with metadata. Consider an Apple OSX property list. In this example, we have a property list or plist as Apple refers to them. And we'll notice that the model isn't easily readable and finding information isn't exactly intuitive. We have keys and values. We have integers and values, but it's not quite clear on the relationship between keys and the values. Should the key major version be kept with an integer 10, or does 10 apply to minor version? Doing a search, looking for minor version, and looking for a minor version with integer value of 1, we can certainly get back information. But are we sure that the minor version is indeed 1? Without doing other types of indexes, such as maybe proximity type of indexes and more complicated queries, it's difficult to tell from the structure of the document if we retrieve the correct data or not. We might have to use filtered searches to rule out false positives. Modeling the document to more plainly express the XML makes it more readable and more efficient to index. The relationship between minor version and its value is now apparent. Querying for the minor application version is simpler and more efficient. There's no question what value goes with what data element, thus removing any false positives. When in doubt, change it. Given an original document, perhaps some data from a live data feed or a SQL table, maybe there is a desire to standardize the gender field so a new gender element can be added to the original feed document, enriching that information and making its purpose clear. Or perhaps some additional data needs to be captured after the claim is processed. This new information can be stored in line with the original document. 
However, there is a potential for loss of original context. Plus, IT governance and auditing would probably need access to the original data feed. The envelope pattern to enrich documents while also keeping the original content can be utilized. Give this source document a new parent element or with JSON make another object around the original. Add any standardization fields as children to the new parent. Both the original data and enriched parts of the document can be indexed and searched. When the original source document is required, it can be easily retrieved. In this video, you learned how document size affects the data model, applying granularity in the document model to achieve high-performing indexes, denormalizing data in order to maintain relationships rather than reconstructing them at query time, keeping the data model simple and easy to read, applying a data model that fits application needs and to transform when different needs arise. Thank you for attending this MarkLogic University On Demand course. Please visit mlu.marklogic.com slash on demand for a complete selection of on demand topics.